Thank you, Engela, and good evening, dear ladies and gentlemen. What an absolute pleasure to see you all tonight. And the best thing ever is that I see many, many faces who are actually younger than mine. Okay, that doesn't take much, but anyway. <laughs> so I see there are many students here tonight, and many of my colleagues in the faculty. Can you just raise your hands? Let's just have a look at you. Where are our students? There we go. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Fantastic. It's great to see you all here tonight. And I have unconsciously welcomed the most important people in the room, so nonetheless. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say it's wonderful to see you here tonight. And a special word of welcome to the members of the Maponya family. Uh, we have a special person who is not here tonight. We all know Ntati Maponya, Richard Maponya. And in our faculty, we call him Ntati Muhulu. Uh, because he is, for us, the grandfather in our faculty. He is the son of Soweto, and it's an area which our university holds dear. Uh, just for the sake of interest, our investment currently in, in Soweto campus has now, is now exceeding one billion rand. And we are so proud of our campus there and, and the work that's been done there. And he has also received an honorary doctorate from our faculty. And he is just a wonderful person who is incredibly close to our hearts. And I understand from that your dad is ill and that he would not have his difficulty speaking at the moment. And that is why he's not able to be here. But Roy, his presence is here. And we can sense him and we can feel him. So please convey our very best wishes and a speedy recovery to him, if you don't mind. So um, the important thing is to, to also acknowledge tonight our, the, the, Mr. George Nkota, who is the uh, director of the Richard Maponia Skills Institute. I'd like to acknowledge Kostas Georgiadis, who is also with us tonight. And uh, in acknowledging all people who are here tonight, and I'd like to share a story with you. And given that we've got students here tonight, and many young folks, I'd like to tell you the story. It's about a young man and a young woman who walked along the beach. Uh, obviously, they were UJ students. I mean, it doesn't take much to say it. And after a while, they were strolling along. They got, got slightly bored. And they started to explore some of the caves along the hills. And in one of these caves, they found an old leather bag. And when they opened this, this leather bag was filled with clay balls. They didn't look like much. They looked like simply hand-rolled balls, and the clay was slightly cracked because it was left in the sun to dry, and they took it with them. And as they walked along, they started to throw these clay balls into the ocean, one by one by one. And after a while, there was about four of these clay balls left. And accidentally, one of these clay balls fell out, broke open on a rock, and inside was a massive diamond this size. Can you imagine? And then they realized, oh my goodness, but we have already thrown about 60 or 70 of these clay balls into the ocean. What a loss. So you see, the, the, the moral of the story is that all of us discover wonderful clay balls in our life, and we don't realize what is inside it. We don't always realize what is inside us. And we play around with this, and we don't take it seriously. So let's put this in real life. An event like this doesn't just happen. One of the clay balls that we recognize tonight, the diamond inside the clay ball, is the vision of a man called Richard Maponya. And tonight we celebrate that diamond and we take lessons from that diamond, we take wisdom from that diamond, we make it part of ourselves as we move forward. The second diamond is that Many of us have had the opportunity or is currently having the opportunity to study at a university. And yes, you've worked hard for the right to do so, but do we always recognize how precious this is and what an asset it is to continue learning? And the fact that you're working towards your first qualification means that you've kind of just gone past matric. The fact of the matter is that in life, learning never, never stops. So how do we consider this? And as universities, we are actually this, asking this question for ourselves. We all are aware of fees must fall. We all are, are all aware of the scenario which is unfolding. At the moment, the way things are going, we may have another 0% increase next year. We hope for a 
CPI, Consumer Price Index rise, which is roughly about 6%. We hope that we would get 60% plus 2. But if it's 66%, it means that 9 of the 23 universities will already be bankrupt next year. If we have a 0% increase, 19 of the 23 universities will be bankrupt. We have serious cash flow problems. And at UJ, we are fortunate. We have reserves to buffer ourselves and to see the way forward. But the challenge now is to understand clearly that it's not business as usual. Things are changing dramatically. And you know what is the most difficult part to change? Not necessary cash flow, but what has happening between people's ears. And understanding, my guys, this is the reality that we're facing. Get out of your damn comfort zone and just think a little bit differently. And what is really important is that you can't figure all of these things out on your own. Um, you know, the days where kind of a dean or the warrior leader would run ahead with a flag and say, come on, guys, this is the story, it doesn't work. You have to really tap into the wisdom of other people and other like-minded organizations. And this is why, Dr. Van Staden, it's so wonderful to have you and your team here tonight because we now feel, you know, we're walking together. We're doing what is supposed to be done. We're finding new solutions. And tonight we will also tap into your wisdom. And what is the third one that I'd like to emphasize? Tonight we have a guest speaker here by the name of Kostas. And we had a brief chat a while ago while we were having a Coke light. Uh, mm, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm short of memory. <laughs> And uh, we were chatting about life. I mean, we were actually talking about your life. And one thing that, I, that he's kind of shared with me is how many mistakes he's made. And apparently he has a, had a battle with about every lawyer in Pretoria and actually he's still yet to tell the story. So how do we learn? From things that went right? Or in terms of what we screwed up and what kind of lessons we've learned and how we've moved forward? And tonight he's going to share some of this, all of these wisdoms with us. So there already, we have three clay balls in our hands which we have never recognized. So in summary, this is why it's great to see you all tonight. So once again, to our honored guests, to our future, every young person who's here tonight with a flame burning in their heart, it's wonderful to have you here. And I can tell you, in the line of my job, I, I, I deal with the generation beyond me every day. And I'm so encouraged. It's unbelievable the amount of positive energy that there is among our students. Did you know that, that our students won the National in Actors competition two weeks ago? They're on their way to Canada. And what this is about... I wish my Joyce was here tonight. She would have kind of really done the... You know. But it's just wonderful to think how our students really care about others. And there's a whole new dimension of caring moving into the faculty. Last week, uh, Jane Spowart is my, my colleague in the faculty. She's our Vice Dean for Teaching and Learning. And last week, we celebrated together with our senior students a whole new volunteer mentor group who stepped in on own accord to start to take care of our first year students. Because it's a scary thing when you enter a place like UJ. I mean, I've been with UJ now for almost 10 years and uh, I still get lost when somebody tells me to go to APK uh, B267 and you just park on B block. Yeah? <laughs> so really, so it's, it's a wonderful initiative and these are the things that I find heartwarming. In short, thank you for being here tonight. We hope you have a wonderful time and we are so looking forward to sharing in your wisdom. So thank you very much. Riele Borja. Thank you.